How are you doing today? Praise God. Praise God, Ryan. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Hey, we've got almost 70 degrees down here in Georgia, man. Yeah, we're, we're supposed to get that high today up here. It's a little wow. windy, but uh, we're supposed to be doing pretty good. Wow, wow, wow. Good old Pennsylvania. Good old Pennsylvania. Praise God. That's my home state, everybody. Love me some Pennsylvania. Praise God. Ryan, give my love to your precious wife, Tara, and your your 15-year-old daughter, Jenna. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. God bless. We're, praise God. We're going to ask you to come on again uh, shortly and lead us in prayer. We love it when you lead us in prayer. Okay, Ryan? Oh, praise God. Amen. We do. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, everybody. We're just greeting a few people at a time and um, seeing how they're doing. I think, I think, I'm not sure now, but I think we have Melanie Bias on with us today. If so, Melanie, come on and say hello to us. Hey, good morning, Pastor. Yes, I'm here today. Hey, praise God. Melanie Bias, everybody. She's from a place called Gray, Georgia. You'll say, where in the world is Gray, Georgia? Or in the old days, they say, where in the deuce is Gray, Georgia? Hey, Melanie, tell us where Gray, Georgia is. I'm a transplant, but now I call it God's country. It's probably midway between Macon and Milledgeville. And okay. it's usually the route that people take from central Georgia going up to Athens. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We've been down that pretty close to that way. Jackie and I, we've been down to Milledgeville, 441 South. Am I talking, am I talking right? Uh, probably from Atlanta, but you wouldn't come through Gray to go that direction. Yes, yeah, we've been as far as Milledgeville. But uh, one of these days, we're going to get down to Gray because we owe you a visit, Melanie. You know you have an open invitation. All right, good. Praise God. Praise God. Praise all is well with you. And uh, so happy to have you on with us at the online church. Well, good morning, everybody. And praise God. Uh, we're recording, and the recording goes out all over the world. All over the world, people are being blessed by this ministry. Our friends in Kenya, they're excited because we're going to start uh, phase two of their building program this year. And this phase two, uh, we might be able to finish the whole thing. We have built the new church for them in Kenya. They've got several families worshiping and growing in the Lord. Bishop Elijah, the pastor there, is excited. And so this year, uh, we're going to... Um, raise $3,500 to have them plaster the church walls inside and out so that that cold air doesn't creep in, that cold, damp air. You know, you wouldn't believe it gets cold in Africa. It gets damp in Africa, and people catch pneumonia in Africa uh, uh, and malaria. And so we want to finish that. That building is erected. You all helped us last year, and it's a fine building, and uh, people are coming from the countryside to worship there, and now we want to make it more comfortable for them by plastering the walls inside and out, and uh, we hope you'll be able to help us with, with your tithes and offerings and your donations. We're just starting this coming week a fundraiser on Facebook, and uh, you can also go to the website and... Um, Make your donations at, click on the top of any page, Donate Now, and we, we solicit your donations. We don't ask for a whole lot of money on the Back to Basics online church, but we do ask you to support this fundraiser. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those of you who are live and those who are listening to, to the recording, if you do not support a church with your tithes and offerings, we would like to ask you to support Back to Basics Online Church. Uh, help us to complete the work in Africa, and then we can move on uh, to do another project somewhere else. And your tithes and your offerings help with that. Uh, your tithes and your offerings also help people to get scholarships for the Back to Basics Online School. And so we just thank God for you. We praise God. Um, we don't know if we have Jackie Fisher on live with us uh, or not. Uh, 
Jackie Fisher is traveling and she might be able to connect by way of telephone. If you're able, Jackie Fisher, just break in uh, any time now and let us know that you're online with us. Okay, she said she would try to catch us. She's in Kentucky. She's way up in the mountains. And so uh, she said she may not be able to be online live with us, but we got plenty of people here. And uh, we just thank God. We give a shout-out to Shauna McDonald, and we give a shout-out to our uh, uh, Christy Carpenter and her family up in Idaho. We give a shout-out to uh, Christina McDaniel in Oklahoma. We give a shout out to CK and all of our friends down in Texas. We give a shout out uh, to Crystal Pressberry in California. And we give a shout out to our friends all over the nation. We love you and thank God for you. Okay, we've got a powerful message today. Um, and um, we, we thank you that you've chosen to worship with us. Uh, here's what we'd like to do. We want to play another song by um, Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson is our friend. We met him in Indiana last year, and Kevin came off the stage and sat down with me and, and uh, uh, shared with me some of his CDs and said, here, you have my, you, you have my permission to play these songs on your, on your, your program. And so we don't own the copyright to these songs, but we have Kevin's personal permission to play his songs. He's a man of God. He's a man of God. Uh, you've already heard him uh, sing about prayer wings and how we can help others to get their prayers through by praying with them and for them. And this song is uh, called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. After we hear from Kevin Wilson, then we're going to uh, go into prayer, and then we're going to get ready for the word. Don't sweat the small stuff. And this is a song by Kevin Wilson. Bring the country out of you as you're listening to this, ladies and gentlemen. Let the country come out of you. Just hold on, be strong, 
sometimes get to Praise God, praise God, my friends. That's Kevin S. Wilson from Kentucky. And he said, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. I like the way Kevin ends his songs. He, he ends them like you, you're waiting on something else. It, it's like a question mark. Don't sweat the small stuff. I mean, I like it. I love it. I love it. You got to love it. You got to love this country uh, uh, singing. Praise God. I, I really... Uh, Loved, loved his singing when I first saw him, and uh, most, most of all, I love Kevin Wilson because he's a man of God, and he and his wife are very serious about following the Lord Jesus Christ, a man of God. Don't sweat the small stuff. Praise God. We welcome Terry Chiquito on with us from Colorado. Praise God. I was praying much for Terry uh, this morning. Uh, they had another shooting in Colorado, and uh, a lot of shootings go on in Colorado, but we've got men and women in Colorado who love the Lord. Cherry T Terry Chiquito is one. She loves the Lord. We call her Mrs. Jeep Girl, and we praise God for her, for her faithfulness to the Lord. And I want to thank God because she stands in the gap. If I ever need a preacher to take uh, the service here at uh Back to Basic School, uh, Back to Basics Online Church, Terry is always ready. So we thank God. Well, bless God. I don't see um, our friend Jackie Fisher. Jackie's traveling this weekend, and she, she says she'll try to catch up with us by telephone. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to ask Ryan Trogler up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. Ryan, please come and lead us. In prayer, y'all pray with Ryan. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning again, Pastor. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly today. We ask you, you know, to forgive our sins. But, you know, we, you know, we know that you died on the cross to shed your blood for all of our sins and to ascend into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for all mankind. And Lord, we want to thank you for defeating death in the grave. That we, that we may one day be free of our sins. And Lord, we just we want to give you all the praise and we just want to give you all the love. And Lord, we just want you to uh, bless this great nation of America, bless our military, <laughs> and Lord, we just ask you to give bless Pastor Carter as he gives us gives him give him the knowledge, the wisdom, and the courage to teach us your word again today. And Lord, we also want to thank you for giving us your word today. So, Lord, we just want to come to you and say we praise you, we honor you, we love you, and worship you and glorify you. In Jesus Christ, precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Ryan. That's Ryan Trogler, ladies and gentlemen, a prayer warrior, and we thank God. We thank God uh, for praying for this church and uh, giving us prayer wings for this ministry. You know, we reach out to people all over the world. And uh, we don't care who you are. We love you. And we want to get the word to you. You see, Jesus is coming back very soon. He's coming back soon, sooner than most people think. And he wants people to be saved, to, be go, with, to go with him when he comes back in the rapture. And so we want you to be rapture ready. Don't let anything, ladies and gentlemen, keep you from 
going with the Lord. And I want to encourage you, even caution you, uh, beg you, don't let anything be in your life that can cause you to miss God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready for a powerful message. And I pray God. Pray that God will anoint me to preach this morning, and uh, my sermon is going to be, uh, Let Us Return Unto the Lord, Part 2. We had Part 1 last week, Let Us Return Unto the Lord, Part 2. Um, and, and God has put on my heart an urgent plea to you, an urgent plea to you to return unto the Lord. There are people all over this land and other lands and other nations who uh, do not have a, re a relationship with the Lord. So we're begging you to turn to the Lord. But then there are also people who love the Lord, have committed their lives to the Lord, but are in a backslidden condition, or they've allowed sin to get in their life, or, or have, have drifted away from the Lord. And, and our plea in this series of messages that I started last week, let us return unto the Lord. Our plea is that you let nothing separate you from the love of God. No, not even one sin. You might have turned back to drinking or smoking cannabis, or now that they've got CBD, you can get uh, painkillers. And, and don't let anything hook you to the place where you put that before the Lord. Uh, 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 don't return. Don't turn to a, an old girlfriend, an old boyfriend, or drugs, or alcohol. Don't let anything separate you from the love of God. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, I only do it every now and then, but what if, Pat, what if Jesus comes when you're doing that which you're doing? What if Jesus comes when you're, when you're participating in that activity that has separated you from God and you know it's a sin? And so we plead with you, we plead with you, return to the Lord and stay with the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a friend. I hope he, he's listening today. I hope he listens to the tape eventually. And, and, and this is one of my best friends, ladies and gentlemen, from way back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he got engaged 15 years ago. He and his fiancée got engaged 15 years ago. And he knows where I stand on this. And uh, uh, um, I'm not going to call his name, but he knows who I'm talking about. He got engaged 15 years ago. And, and they made up their mind they're not going to get married, but they're living together. Ladies and gentlemen, but, but they go to church every Sunday, and they say they love the Lord and this and that. Now, I'm not a judge, but I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher, and I'm begging this guy, man, turn from your sins. Repent of your sins. I mean, you're, you're engaged to a woman. That does not mean you have a license to participate in, in sexual activity and conjugal relationships and that sort of thing. You say, well, Pastor, you're meddling now. Well, I'm a preacher. Yes, I'm meddling. I'm meddling. And, and somebody needs to meddle in some of your lies because we know how to make excuses and we know how to point the finger at somebody else. The Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So while I'm talking about this friend of mine, I'm also adjuring myself. Don't let anything separate me from the love of God. I've got to make sure that I'm right with God. But I'm, I'm begging, I'm praying that God will deliver my friend and, and his fiance from this relationship they're in. Uh, if, if, if you ain't going to marry, uh, uh, get off the pot. Get off the pot. Either, either pee or get off the pot. But don't play with God. Don't tempt God. You've been tempting God for 15 years. But yet you say, but I'm saved. And yet, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people who are saved and have allowed sin to rise up in their lives. God hates sin. He doesn't hate you. He doesn't hate my buddy. But he hates sin. And so he's given us opportunity to repent and to get delivered. And so I plead with him uh, uh, for this man's soul and for his fiance's soul. And, 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 and I plead with God if there's anything in my life that is separating me from God, anything causing me to grieve the Holy Spirit, God, reveal it to me that I may repent of it. Repent means to turn away from it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let 
anything separates you from the love of God. We'll talk about this more later on in the message. Turn with me now, will you? Turn with me now to Luke chapter 15, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Luke chapter 15. And we're going to look at the Scripture. Um, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. The Bible says, and he said, Jesus, this is Jesus talking in a parable, a certain man had two sons. Well, in a parable, usually Jesus would not give a person's name. He would give the situation but not give any specific names, okay? And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk, the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Verse 17, we're in Luke 15, ladies and gentlemen. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. We're in Luke chapter 15, verse 27. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, meaning the older brother was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, look here, Dad, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, in other words, you never gave me a goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. I read uh, from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. We know this as the story of the prodigal son, and my subject today is, let us return unto the Lord. And I would earlier been speaking about a friend of mine who's been engaged to his fiancée for 15 years, 
and they're living together, and they are not married. Ladies and gentlemen, they go to church every Sunday, but they're not married. I'm not condemning them, but I'm just using this as an illustration of don't tempt the Lord. It is better to surrender and say, Lord, I, I return to you. I want to do right. I want to get right with you. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get in your upper 70s, you're in your upper 70s pushing, knocking on the door of 80. I mean, a couple of years from now, I'll be 80 years old. It's time to put away all these simple things, this dumb stuff, this stupid stuff. It's time to get rid of those things that uh, pre uh, separate us from God because, hey, uh, uh, like uh, it's it's not like Ronnie Millsap used to sing. You'll say, well, who's Ronnie Millsap? Ronnie Millsap used to sing back in the 60s. He was a blind country singer, and he sang, Time is on my side. Yes, it is. Time, time, time is on my side. You'll realize that when you get up into your 70s, time ain't on your side. Time is not on on your side. Many of us are living on borrowed time. We're living by the grace of God. And the older you get, ladies and gentlemen, the more you ought to realize we need to stop tempting God. I wonder, can I get a witness out there? We need to get to realize, hey, I need to stop tempting God because tomorrow ain't promised and time ain't on my side. But you know, there are people who are stubborn. People who are stubborn. They continue to smoke that grass. They continue to uh, 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 snort that cocaine. They, they continue to pop that heroin. They continue with the opioids. They continue uh, in adultery. Ladies and gentlemen, why go to hell for five minutes of pleasure? Why go to hell for a half hour of, 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 of being high? Why go to hell for a season of pleasure. Hell is real, ladies and gentlemen. Hell is real. There are a lot of people, they don't believe there's a hell. They say, well, we're living in hell now. That's how stupid some people are. Ladies and gentlemen, do not defy the Lord God. Jesus says there is a hell. He says there's a hell. Read about it in the very next chapter of Luke. The rich man who went to hell. There is a hell. Jesus said it. Jesus said it, I believe it, but don't, don't risk eternal life for the pleasures of a season. Don't risk eternal life for the pleasures of a, a woman or a man. Don't risk eternal life for the pleasures of money. Don't risk eternal life for the, for the high of being intoxicated. Ladies and gentlemen, eternal life begins the moment we die. Where are you going to spend eternity? We need to answer that question, you and I. Where do we intend to spend eternity? I hope your answer is heaven with Jesus. And if your answer is, then are, are you saved? Are you saved? Well, I joined the church. No, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, joining the church does not save you. You can't show me anywhere where it says joining the church guarantees you salvation. Joining the church means you joined the church. Join, and, and I don't preach. I don't preach go back to church. I'm not saying let us return to church. No, my subject is let us return unto the Lord. There are a lot of folks returning to the church, getting, and, and you know, hey, they go off for a season. They go off. They smoke their, their weed. They drink their liquor. They commit adultery. They live with another man or another woman. Uh, uh, they engage in sinful pleasures for a season. Then all of a sudden, they come back to church, and, and, and the church leaders restore them to their position. They're back on the choir. They're back on the usher board. They're back teaching Sunday school. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has do, done people more harm than almost any other organization because the church does not uh, fulfill, is not fulfilling the will of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot 
seed, the kingdom of God. And so if, if the church is preaching, uh, join the church, uh, unite with this fellowship, unite with this denomination, we're doing people an injustice because a lot of denominations, I'm going to say it, a lot of denominations are screwed up. They've got a, 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 a anti-Christ mentality. Uh, it, a lot of denominations are self-feeding. You know, they think they're more than anybody else, and they've got people deceived. But the Bible says you must be born again. And so Hosea chapter 6, 1, Hosea chapter 6, 1 says to us, and we preached from this last week, Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. And in and, and Hosea, the prophet gave the people a warning that God was going to destroy, he's going to smite, he's going to tear up, but he will also restore. And for those who are willing to obey the Lord and do what God says, God will bind up our wounds. He will heal. He says, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah Jireh. I will supply your every need. Jesus said, uh, said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find and rest unto your soul. And so the Bible is God's appeal to mankind to come to Jesus. There's only one way to reach God, and that's through Jesus Christ. No, you cannot, you cannot get saved by joining a certain denomination. You cannot be saved by, by uh, reciting the catechism. You cannot be saved by doing what the denomination says. You cannot be saved by kissing up to the bishop. You, know, you, you might be the bishop's chauffeur. You might be uh, the one who uh, uh, waves the fan to keep the bishop cool. But that is not going to get you saved. That's only going to get you in deeper trouble with God. Do not idolize people. Flee from idolatry. Don't have anything or any person in your life that's going to replace the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You say, well, hey, we're engaged. I mean, engagement, that's just like being married. I put a ring on our finger. I, I paid a top dollar for that ring. I put the ring on our finger. I'm paying for the apartment. I'm paying the mortgage. And so I'm entitled to some of the privileges. No, 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 all contraire. You are not entitled to anything. You know, there are a lot of people who are in this entitlement generation, think that everybody owes them a living. There are people who think the church owes them something. There are people in the church who think, I owe them something. Uh, uh, I don't owe you anything but to love you and to pray for you. Uh, Jesus said, you must be born again. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus preached that. He taught that. The Bible teaches it. But yet still, people think that they can get to heaven by doing good, or and then there are people who will say, well, well, God will let me know just before I die, and, and then I'll repent, and then i ask him to forgive me. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not work that way. It does not work that way. People are being zapped all over the place, all over this nation, all over the world. People are being zapped on a daily basis. Many people don't even have an opportunity to cry out Jesus before they die. What makes you think God is going to give you a special privilege and go against his word? God is not going to go against his word, ladies and gentlemen, and give you some special revelation before you die and, and, and tell you uh, to get right. Uh, that happened only in a few situations. It happened in Hezekiah's life. It happened in other lives. But God is giving us warnings daily, day after day. Day after day, serious preachers are preaching the gospel. You must be born again. We don't just preach this gospel seriously. We live it seriously. We live it seriously. Now, I'm not saying I'm free from sin and above sin. I'm not the president of the United States, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not free from sin and above sin. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I've got to do the word of God. And if I don't do the word of God and God reveals it to me, I've got to repent. 
or if God sends someone to me and says, thus saith the Lord, you need to repent of this, I need to repent. I'm not supposed to shoot down the postman or the, the UPS man or the deliverer person who brings me that message. Ladies and gentlemen, we all need to take heed. The Bible says, wherefore, let us take heed. Uh, anyone, anyone who thinks he stands, let him take heed unless he fall. We need to hear the gospel. We need to be preachable. We need to have a teachable spirit. We need to be receptive to the word of God. Do not harden your heart against God as uh, our ancestors did during the provocation, during the wilderness journey through through. From Egypt, they hardened their hearts against God, and no word that came from the prophets was good enough. They rejected the word of God. They rejected Moses. They rejected Joshua. They rejected Samuel. They rejected the prophets, and no word of God would penetrate in their heart because they hardened their hearts against God. How can you harden your heart against the one who sustains you? the one who gave us life, the one who brought us into this world. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I beg you, I beg you, if you're sinning, if there's sin in your life, Satan's got a grip on you, some habit's got you, something ungodly has got you, you're doing stuff you know you should not be doing. You know you need to turn to God. You know you need to return to God. I am not saying go to church. I'm not saying join the church because that is not the answer. I would be doing you more harm saying go to church. Because a lot of people have been deceived because preachers say, go to church, come to my church. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not trying to build a huge gathering here. We want you to hear the word of God and get saved and stay saved. I don't care if you ever, ever, ever again. You don't ever, ever again have to uh, listen to a message on the online church. But if this message today will save you, will get you your eyes open and help you to turn to the Lord or return to the Lord, then I've accomplished my purpose. It is not about going to church. It is not about singing in the choir. Many choir members have been deceived. Uh, 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 she's the diva on the choir now. She sings the solos or he's got a band or she's got a praise team. They do interpretive dancing in the church. Yes, she's doing interpretive dancing uh, on Sunday morning, but she's giving up her body uh, to the guy she's living it with, and he's not her husband. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not a man that, that uh, he could, can be deceived. God is not a liar. God is not deceived, nor is he mocked. God knows everything we do. He knows our thoughts even before we think them. And he begs us, he begs us. The whole gospel from Genesis to Revelation is all about God's preparing a way for us to spend eternity with him because he loves us and he's made the way. Jesus Christ is the way. So turn to the Lord. Get saved. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Receive him by faith. And if you've already done that and you find yourself backslidden, you're in a situation that you can't control it. You're going south. You're downsliding. You know you're downsliding. You can't help yourself. No matter how much you try, you make New Year's resolution, resolutions, you swear you got people praying for you, but you keep on smoking that cannabis. You keep on drinking that liquor. You keep on uh, 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 fornicating. You keep on committing adultery with somebody else's spouse. You, keep, you just can't help yourself. You got to have it. You got to have it. Well, and, and, and you're sitting up on the deacon board in the church, or you're a steward in the church, or you're on the trustee board, or you, you might even be the pastors. There are a lot of pastors, ladies and gentlemen, cheating on their wives. They preach a good sermon on Sunday, and throughout the week they are sleeping with somebody else's spouse. There are a lot of pastors, men sleeping with men, women sleeping with women, and they've got people food. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is not 
join in the church. I know I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching. I know the devil hates this kind of preaching, but the devil is a liar. We preach Christ Jesus crucified, buried, and resurrected. We preach that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Well, preacher, what does it mean? Believes in him. That means you must commit your life to the Lord Jesus. That means you must turn from sin. That means you must repent from sin. Turn away from it. Leave it alone. Run from it. The Bible says flee idolatry. Let us run from it. Don't have any idols in your life. Don't let that girlfriend be an idol. Don't let that boyfriend be an idol. Don't even let your husband be an idol. Don't even let your wife be an idol. Don't let your job be an idol. Don't let your money be an idol. Don't let your cars be an idol. Don't let anything separate you from the love of of Jesus Christ. If you find that uh, there's stuff in your life taking up more time than God, if there's a person in your life takes up more attention and more time than God, then you've got to repent. Flee from idolatry. Let nothing separate you from the love of God. This young boy in the scripture, he came of age. He started to smell his own stink. He started to smell himself. As my mother used to say, okay, son, you're starting to smell yourself now. You're growing up now, starting to smell yourself. You're getting sassy around here. You're saying stuff you wouldn't normally say, and you're getting too big for your britches, and, and, and I'm going to have your daddy. Your daddy going to bring you down a peg or two. That's the way my mama treated me. Your daddy will bring you down off your high horse. Well, this young man grew up, and, and, and he knew that he was going to get an inheritance and in the Old Testament days, the oldest son, if there were two sons, the oldest son got two-thirds of the, the father's inheritance. Two-thirds of what the father owned would go to him, and one-third would go to the youngest son. And so the youngest son said, as, as he reached a certain age, Oh, uh, hey, Dad, I mean, I'm not hoping you die or anything, but uh, uh, just give me my portion right now. I want my portion. You know, I'm grown. I'm 17 years old. I'm grown. I'm a man. I'm a man, you know. I can do my own thing. I make my own decisions, you know. You know what I mean, Dad? You know where I'm coming from, man. So look here, man. I mean, the law says you're going to give me this, so I want it now. Give it to me now. And the father, the father gave him his inheritance. The father knew there was nothing, no begging, no, 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 no communic no negotiating with him. So the young man had made up his mind. Just like we know people in our family, they've made up their mind. They're going to live a certain way, and, and, and ain't nothing you can do but love them and pray for them. And, and so give me what's due me. I mean, that's a selfish young man. Give me what is mine. Now, he hasn't earned a penny of it, hasn't earned anything of it, but there are a lot of people who get rich because of inheritance. Somebody worked hard. They uh, 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 worked hard and, 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 and built a financial empire only to leave it to some, 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 some ungodly, unintelligent, stupid, uh, not caring, not appreciating where, uh, not appreciating where, appreciating where it came from, man or woman. And so, Dad, give me what I'm doing now. And so the Dad gave him his inheritance, and the young man took that inheritance and went to a foreign country and started living ungodly. I mean, he was spending his money on whores, prostitutes. I mean, he was surrounded by whores and prostitutes. And, you know, whores and prostitutes will love you uh, 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 Every day, all the time, all day long, if you got the money, because they're not really loving you, they're loving that money. And so, uh, the, and, and he was whining and dining and setting the, set the bar up and uh, run the bar again and, and drinks on the house, drinks on me. Uh, here, smoke all the grass you want, uh, all the cocaine you want, it's on me. And then, boom, the bottom fell out. It reminds me, Wes, of, of uh, two neighbors we had lived up the street from us years ago uh, when you were a teenager. Uh, they were teenagers, and they lived in a house up above us, near us, and their parents got killed in a car accident, 
and left that house and all that property and that inheritance to those two young men. Ladies and gentlemen, the girls flocked to those two boys' houses, house because they were teenagers. And these two teenage young men who never uh, uh, worked a day in their life, didn't know a thing about financial planning, uh, they had girlfriends. They moved their girlfriends in the house. And within six months, ladies and gentlemen, within six months, the bottom caved in. They spent all their money. They spent it all frivolously. And before long, both of those teenagers had to give up their house. They lost the house. The house was repossessed. And those two men wound up going into the army. Their girlfriends left them, went off with other guys. You know how people are. Hey, you ain't got nothing for me. You ain't got nothing for me. Why should I hang around with you? You ain't not. You broke, busted, and disgusted. And so, uh, uh, so these two young men were like this young man. The bottom fell out. And so this young man is in a foreign land. A famine comes. He, 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 he's broke, busted, and disgusted. And no more friends. You know, friends have a way of leaving you when they're no tengo dinero, no tengo dinero. Uh, I ain't got no money. And, and, and so the friends uh, went off. And, and here's this young man in the foreign land all by himself, broke, busted, and disgusted. And so he needed a job, and he hired himself out to a pig farmer. He was Jewish, and he hired himself out to a pig farmer. Now, Jews are not supposed to come into contact with swine. To the Jews, swine is unclean, un unclean. Hey, <laughs> but to us who are not Jews, you know, a swine, I mean, I'm talking about ribs and bacon and ham. I mean, that might be an unclean animal. He, pigs are filthy. Pigs are filthy, but ham is good. Pigs are filthy, but bacon is good. Pigs are filthy, but when I was sucking on those ribs uh, two nights ago, uh, 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 I wasn't thinking about the pig. I was thinking about the ribs. Ladies. Yes, I eat ribs, I eat ham, and I eat bacon. Hallelujah. By the way, my family, my father raised some pigs. No, not my brothers and sister and me. Even though my mama called us pigs, you ain't nothing but a pig. You need to act right. You need to get some sense. You need to get some manners. My mama called us pigs at times. But no, we literally had pigs. We had a pig pen out, out in the back field and, and uh, every day one of my jobs was to take the garbage from, from the leftovers Take the pot of garbage out to the pigs, dump it into the pig pen, and the pigs would just uh, snort and, and, and eat it, and it would mix in with their, with their uh, slop and with their, their defecation, and, and, and they would eat it. Pigs are filthy animals, but the, like I said, the bacon was good, and the ham was good, and the ribs were good. So we raised pigs when I was growing up. And so this young man found himself in working for a pig farmer, and the Bible says he would fain eat the food that the pigs ate. He was ready to eat the food that the pigs ate when he came to himself. Verse 17, and he came to himself. He said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Verse 20 of Luke 14, 15. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great, far away, a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. That's the way fathers are, ladies and gentlemen. We love our children. We love our sons and daughters. I'm so glad to have my son on with, on our, live with us today. He knows I love him. Praise God. And I can see this father running and having compassion on his son. He didn't think of all the bad stuff his son did. Look, look. He said, my son has returned, praise God. And, you know, a Christian father prays that his son and his daughter, his sons and daughters will know the Lord. And if they stray, that they will return to the Lord. That's the way we fathers roll. And so this man said, 
I'm going to return unto my father. I'm going to ask my father to forgive me, and I know I don't deserve to be his son, but at least make me to be one of his servants. That's called humility. That boy had a humbling experience. And ladies and gentlemen, you might be out there right now. You, your, your life is not where you want it to be. You have made some choices and some decisions that have messed you up, and Satan is out to destroy you. And you know there, uh, the harder, it seems like the harder you try to get back to God, the more difficult it is. But I say to you, return to God the Father. Make up your mind that nothing is going to separate you from God the Father. And then just don't make up your mind. Do what this young boy did. He knew he messed up. There's no way he could undo the things he had done. And the Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us have black marks in our past. Every one of us have blown it. We've messed up. But ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, when you realize that you have messed up, when you realize that you, you, you've done evil, that you have uh, sinned against God, repent. Repent means to make up your mind, I'm through with this. Repent means to confess it. Repent means to humble yourself before God. Repent means to turn from it. And repent means to turn back to God. Don't just say, I'm going to church, because going to church ain't going to do a thing for you. Going to church might probably mess you up more than anything else if that's your goal to go to church. I'm going back to church. No, 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 no. That will not save you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Turn to Jesus. Make up your mind. No matter who you are, where you are, make up your mind. I'm going to give my life to Jesus. You might be engaged to that woman. Uh, you've been living together for 15 years. You know you're living in sin. You know if you die tonight, you're going to go to hell. Why don't you repent? Put a ring on her finger. Marry her. If she won't marry you, then get out. Move. Go. Get away. Get away from the situation. Well, you don't know how much I've invested in this over 15 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I would rather lose a 15-year investment than to lose my soul because of disobedience. Repent. Do what this young boy did. He came to his senses. A lot of you need to come to your senses. Yes, I'm looking at you, and I'm looking you right smack dab in your eyeballs, and I'm saying you need to come to your senses. Stop trying to be cute. Stop trying to be proud. Stop thinking of yourself more highly than what you ought. You are not above the law. There's only one person I know who thinks they're above the law. That's the President of the United States. But he will have his day of humiliation. Repent, ladies and gentlemen. Re oh, oh, you don't like the way I'm talking about your President? Well, I'm going to keep on talking about him till he repents because I'm praying that he repents. Repent. Turn unto the Lord God. None of us is above the law. None of us. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Repent. 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 Get up out of that pig pen. Repent. Get up out of that life. Don't let drugs control you. Don't let money control you. Don't let somebody else, else's wife control you. Don't let the Democratic Party control you. Don't let the Republican, Par Republican Party control you. <clears throat> now I'm talking to all of you evangelicals out there. You're sleeping with the enemy. The enemy is your political party. You've turned your back from God, and now your God is your political party. How can you keep on lying and spinning the same old lies in defense of a lying president? Repent. Get right with God. I don't care if you don't like me. Get right with God. That's the most important thing is be reconciled to God. That's what the scripture says. Ask the Lord Jesus.
to come into your life. If you've already received him, then repent of your sins. Ask God to forgive you. Then stop walking in rebellion. Stop walking in hatred. Stop, stop, stop being a racist. Stop hating people because of the color of their skin. Stop it. Stop hating people because uh, uh, they've got more cars than you do. Stop it. Repent. Walk in love. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost that you can walk in love with all people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I'm so glad to have an opportunity to share the gospel with you. I know today's message was tight, but oh, it's so right. I know it was tight. It had you squirming in your seat. You had the itchy, twitchy feeling, but praise God, hallelujah, I've done my part, Lord God. I preach your word. Now help me to live your word, Lord God. Now I just release the Holy Spirit to do what he knows how to do. You know what to do, Lord. We have received your word. Now work in the hearts of the people. Start with me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I confess my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Let me not think more highly of myself than I ought, but help me to think of you. You're the way, the truth, and the life. I'm sorry. I confess my sins. I repent of my sins, and I trust you, Lord, to guide me, to guide me, deliver me, cleanse me from all iniquity, all unrighteousness. And do the same for our listeners. And we praise you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If this message has helped you or if you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to, to give me a call or to send me an email or send a message to my YouTube channel or to go on the website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. We're in the business of preaching the gospel. Why? Why? Because we've been called by God to preach the gospel. Because God does not want any of you to perish. He loves the world so much. He gave his only begotten son that he's made a way of escape. There is a way of escape. Call on the name of the Lord. Return to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord, for this message today. And we stop the recording.